to the day as the fifth leading quarterback in passing touchdowns in the NCAA. They think they've upgraded all along their offense and defense, but the most important position. Got to give it a go today. They'd love to get a win against a Big 12 team. Something about those Bobcats and going against those Baylor Bears. Wait, they end up getting them more balanced. They didn't protect well. They didn't make some plays downfield. Comes in. Third different tailback we've seen on this opening drive. Play action. This is the tight end Johnson. The true freshman tight end picks up seven yards and a late flag. We get a block in the back, isn't he? Illegal block in the back. Offense number 76. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Play action. This is the fullback Yates. He's got the first down. Completes it for first down. Two Four tight end formation. Down. You get both Johnson and Dabney in the game. Reese right at the gut. Hitter. Richard Reese rips off 14 and the game's first score. The kicking spot will come on for the extra point. Standard issue. Baylor Bears will. Seamus O'Kelly. His first punt of the game. Their catch is called for and made by Gavin Holmes. Ravenous on a Saturday afternoon. That's Jeff Grimes, offensive coordinator for Baylor. Third down and four. They're going to try and run for it. And Reese is pushed out of bounds. Well short of the line. Timeout, Texas State. A nice defensive stand. They get the football right back for their offense. This time he gets the ball out on time to the hitch route that's wide open. And now they're going fast. Hawkins again. He's already got three catches. Looked like the face mask was turned a bit. And the flag is down on the field. Yeah. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 13. A 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Al Wolcott called for... Blitz comes off the edge. Shapin makes a man miss. He's got fleets in the flat, but decides to keep it and pays the price. Oh, he got decked. Sione Tupo. After the play, personal foul. Targeting defense number 55. A 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. The targeting is under further review. At that point, he becomes defenseless. So then you look to see he gets head and neck area protection if you rule him defenseless. Now, got to be head and neck. If it's if it's just shoulder to the chest, which it looks like it might be, then it's not. Start to he started to slide, and then simultaneously the tackle was already happening. So this is very interesting what they will do. Well, obviously it's a magic, it's huge proportions, a huge gain because of the penalty for Baylor, and if targeting is upheld. You will have Tupo missing the remainder of the game. Mike, what else are you thinking right now? I think the other thing you look at now, is he attacking? I mean, that's the thing. There has to be an attack feature to prove that it's targeting. And he's almost bracing himself for the contact. He's not moving forward. So I think that's another thing that makes it more not targeting in my book. Yeah, Mike, this is one of those tough ones, right, real time, where you're watching as a referee. That it makes it super difficult. The helmet comes off. You get the whip action of shaping, right? Right, right. And it's these are tough and important to remember now targeting is not an epidemic here. There's only one targeting for every about 4.18 games, almost five games. So I think it's a, a, they've done a good job with the targeting rule, making the game safer. But it's these types of gray plays that are really tough on these big hits like this. Mike, thank you for your help. Here's the call. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Number 55 for Texas State will remain in the game. Number 12 for Baylor must leave for one play because he lost his helmet during the down. <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you so much. That's wonderful stuff. We, uh, The crew working hard to get it right. I, I just hate the fact that targeting is such a penile thing. Yeah. So staying in the ball game is Tupo, but now leaving the ball game for yeah. play is Blake Shapin. Yeah, I mean, it, it almost completely flipped, right? You were going to get a 15-yard penalty, you're going to get all these yards, and now your quarterback has to come out for a play.
So Shapin is strapping on the, the two straps now on the helmet to make sure he can come back in and stay in the game. Backup quarterback is Kyron Drones. Drones has played a little bit this year. He's thrown seven passes, completed five of them. And a little play action. I like it. This is Seth Jones inside the 30. Trying to finish up that run with some power. 11-yard gain for Jones. Good job by Drones. When we talked to Coach Grimes, he said we like what Kyron Jones has done in fall camp and, and competing, and we're comfortable with him in this offense. That's a very good job of making sure you put this young guy on the move because Texas State, I can guarantee, was not expecting for, for Drones to come in and throw a pass. Drones to Jones. He drones to I can Jones. see that as a t-shirt in the years to come. Shaping back into the ball game. Williams. Craig Williams. All kinds of speed. Did he stay in bounds? He did. Touchdown, Baylor. 30-yard scamper for the squirrel. When you get to this high speed, but you're 168 pounds, you can stay in bounds and tip on the sideline the way the squirrel did. This is an outstanding job. This is just an outside zone. You're going to run that 200-meter dash right up the sideline. Very nice job of getting on the outside. And this is 168 pounds. You don't got to go out of bounds. You can stay in bounds and tiptoe that sideline all the way to the end zone. Not a question whether you stepped out of bounds. Very nice job. Not a lot of humans can go that fast. Yeah. Stop him. I'm telling you. Stay in bounds. He's a speedy car. He's a, he's a Corvette. Nine plays, 69 yard touchdown drive for Baylor Kevin. can't talk about him enough. Hawkins is, it, it, I'm pretty sure scouts are watching this game. A lot of scouts come watch Baylor, and they're going to stumble upon this Hawkins kid and see. He's got a special ability in that slot. That's what they're looking for at the next level. In that slot to move, create space, get open, get down. And he's doing a, an outstanding job here to start. Well, this is the last time you saw one player have nine catches in the first half. Remember, they got that great field position, Devin, because of that call that none of us really agree with. The squeaking with. whip. Yeah. You got the grease. <laughs> you said that. And no one associated with this broadcast believed that that call was going to be overturned. Yeah. It was and resulted in great starting field position for Texas State. I just want to give a big thank you to Mike Ferreira for telling me not to bet the house. Saving your house. Saving my house. Ball is loose. Oh, Williams no. has to double back, pick up the loose ball, and again, just terrible starting field position for Baylor. <laughs> Again, what just happened? Back-to-back -back possession starting inside the five for Baylor. They're limping right now. Uh, I don't even know. Just dropped it. And then you're scrambling trying to get it back off the ground. And uh, Lucky he didn't fall on me there. It's a banana peel out there is what it is. I'm just telling you. Now, Squirrel's been one of the stars today offensively for Baylor. Had that 30-yard touchdown run, but he'd like to have a do-over here. Wow. And what a kick, right? Just high and just outside the end zone to force them to have to return it. And that's what you get. Second consecutive drive starting on their own four-yard line. Good luck. Nope. Richard Reese swallowed up by Levi Bell. I wonder what Levi... And they've done it twice. Last 20 years, they're the best team in the state of North Carolina, Appalachia State. All right, second down and nine. Pass is caught for the first down. That's Gavin Holmes. Fourth down and one. Reese next to Shapin. And Reese, no chance. It's a keeper. Look at the cornerback, Shapin. Fooled everyone. Touchdown, Baylor. Thirty-five yards. Wonderful ball handling, Blake Shapin. Everyone thought that he was handing it off. Baylor has now converted all three fourth downs in our ball game, and Texas State is stunned. What a turn! 
The personal foul against London Harris giving Baylor a big opportunity. And they make this a 96-yard touchdown drive in the final two minutes of our first half. Kevin Ant Anderson right here. He's going to be tasked with stopping the quarter, but Shapin just really hadn't run much. So when he sees the ball going to stomach, he sees running back with the football, and Shapin has enough speed to get the edge and take it to the house. He's looking back. I don't know why, baby. You're gone. What a play. Breaking a tendency. Not a guy that pulls it a bunch, but when we talk to Coach Ryan, he said, hey, he can run the ball. It's third down. I think verticals. Verticals is the answer here because you can you can see this Texas State defense. They're lining up in middle open defense, and then they're kicking to one high. And they're lining up in middle open defense, then kicking to one guy in the middle of the field, which means the seams is the weakness. The seams is where you want to try to attack. Let's see if they don't go to a vertical type of pass concept to pick up this first down. If I'm the equipment manager for Baylor, I'm going to get Coach Aranda a hat. Josh Flicks moves out of the backfield top of your screen. Third down and 11. Caught! Inside the five! Touchdown! Gavin Holmes, your genius! How about that for a third down play? You gotta get to the seams! The middle defense is going to one high and get yourself a touchdown, young man. Oh, right up the seam for a score. Holmes, welcome to the game. 28 yards on third down, and Baylor, they've extended to a 21-point lead. Largest lead of the afternoon for the Baylor Bears. Maybe starting to get comfortable. Look at that. Holmes, the receiving end of the touchdown pass from Blake Shapin. McLean Stadium is our venue, 28-7. The 17th-ranked Baylor Bears on top of Texas State. After the blocked field goal, Baylor's got it back. Shapin spits it out into space. This is Reese. And Reese continues with what has been a fantastic day for him. He is one yard away from 100 yards rushing and now doing work out of the backfield. It's a nice job by Shape, and they call a big shot. But like I've talked about early in the game, just because a shot is called, you don't have to take the shot down the field. He does a good job maneuvering up in the pocket and finding his outlet that had leaked out after taking the fake. Baylor has played this entire game without Ben Sims as their tight end. Kelly Johnson, Drake Dabney have done a good job. This formation right here is a two tight end formation. Nine different receivers have caught a ball today for Baylor. Reese over 100 yards with a chance for an exclamation point. Touchdown, Baylor! Oh, Richard Reese have a day. 52 big ones. Reach, 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 and allow Reese to find the lane. Nice job, and then burst through the hole, skinny and through. Reese is having himself a day. Coaching staff told us yesterday they thought that he was going to get the lion's share of the carries with no Tate McWilliams, and we're like, okay, true freshman. We'll see what happens. He has been up to the task. Clearly, that coaching staff noticed a gleam in the eye of Richard Reese throughout the course of practice this week because he has been the truth. This here's a champ for all the fellas. Try to do what those ladies tell them. In the game for Baylor. Reese! Right up the gut did he get in there. Yes, he did. Another touchdown for the true freshman, Richard Reese. They're going to bring a tight end across to kick out. And Reese is going to go and get right behind him and squeeze in the end zone. He has a knack for getting skinny, getting small in the hole. You hear talk about, talk about it with defensive linemen when they're getting double team. You want to get skinny. Well, running backs have that ability, too, to get skinny through the hole and burst to the end zone. What a day. Making his first college to start, Richard Reese is having a, a day to remember. Gonna have a hard time getting him out of that starting lineup now. 
And, and the, the reason he's getting so much opportunity is because there are a few guys banged up. And this is how it happens, you know, in college football and, and, and even in pro football at the next level, you, you, you have to be prepared for an opportunity, right? Guys get banged up. Football is a violent sport. And if you're ready, you could vault yourself into a different stratosphere and be a contributor way sooner than you thought you would. Let's tell you a little bit more about Richard Reese and what he's done so far this afternoon. He's been special. Like, you, when you watch these runs, you can see him getting skinny, getting smaller than he actually is, and find his way through holes, catching out the backfield. He's done it all today. And like I said before, Baylor might have found themselves a weapon. And here's the last one where he powers his way in the end zone. And look at looking around. Is it, is it good? Good? Is it? Yeah. It's good. It's good, Reese. It's good. 19 carries, 156 yards, the three touchdowns. Oh, by the way, he's got a 17-yard pass out of the backfield. Scholarship earned on a Saturday afternoon. Play what's some possibilities for Baylor from what you've seen so far, that Devin? I mean, they've responded, and, and that's very important. When you go and you play BYU, and they're a talented football team ranked in the top 25, you kind of get punched in the mouth. But a lot of it was your own doing. You could have easily been on top in that game. They missed extra point in the middle of the game to even get it to your overtime, right? You'd be 21-20 and the game be over. Uh, a lot of miscues. And then you come into the day against a team in Texas State, like we talked about, that is competitive. And they've been competitive in this game. They just haven't been able to finish. And for, for Baylor to, to show the resolve to come out after last week, that, that upset loss, and, and play the way they play today. It's super clean uh, as far as penalties are concerned. And, and the quarterback, Shapin, done a great job and responded to the challenge that was presented to him by the coaching staff. Ball comes out late. Fleeks lost it. And it's a turnover. Josh Fleeks recently converted from receiver to running back. Lost the football. Picked up by Kevin Anderson. And Texas State, they've got the football back. Teaching moment for Dave Miranda. His team is taking the foot off the gas. It's a nice play. It's a nice play. Not giving up. Of Ben Bell who came in trying to finish off Bleaks with his brother Levi Bell underneath him. That's the old-fashioned Malachi Crunch right there. The Bell brothers combined to force the football out. And Texas State has now earned their third turnover. Third takeaway. And Fleeks is not feeling great either. So he fumbles the football and still feeling the effects of that hit. So another opportunity for Texas State to put some points on the board. They haven't scored since the first half. Not for lack of trying. They've crossed midfield six times and only have scored once. A lot of Barry lately. Josh Barry, the first down, and then some late flag comes in. Oh, they may get him for targeting. No. This is going to be bad. It's tough. It looks like they, I, I think they will get him for targeting. We had one targeting called on the field in the first half that was taken away upon review. It's starting to go down. He's going to come left side. Oh, that's, that's targeting uh, if there ever was. Mike Harris. One, I believe. I've been wrong before, but uh, I think that's duck at the head, straight to the helmet. That's going to be tough to uh, overturn. There is no foul on the play. Guess it wasn't that tough. Huh? Looks like he speared him with his helmet, but maybe not. I mean. Mike Pereira, he's with us. Yeah. Can you help us with what you saw? Well, they had a review before they even called the, the foul, and they ruled that it wasn't the crown, that it was the side of the helmet. And uh, it has to be against the runner. It's got to be the absolute crown. And that's why they decided to pick up the flag. That's about as close as it can get, though, right, Mike? No, well, I can't get any closer than that. Quite frankly, I was leaning your direction. But then when you look at it at the runner, since it's a runner, it has to be what they call the 913, mm -hmm. which is that absolute crown of the helmet. And if you can't prove that it's crowned, totally crowned, 
then you can't put on the penalty. But the interesting thing, they kind of made the decision with the help of someone else before they made the announcement. Huh. Huh. Mike, thanks for the clarification. Got to get the measuring tape off for that one. Take one last look at what we're talking about. That's a nice rule, though, because, you know, so many times you get a guy who, you know, maybe, I don't know about that one, but usually trying to get the head out of the way and the helmet's touch, right? Yeah, the helmet's touching, and for, for a, a, a good amount of time early on in the rule, it was always a guy's out of a game, and he's just making a hard, strong, tough football play, and the spirit of the rule was kind of getting lost. Uh, use your helmet as a weapon, and I, I really love the change that they've done, and I, I think it's going to decrease the 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 targeting calls considerably well as mike told us back in the first half targeting calls are actually relatively rare one in every five games on average these days so it's getting the desired effect there's fewer and fewer targeting penalties and then fewer and fewer head injuries mm -hmm. down the road we've gone under a minute to play 45 seconds remaining in our game and counting texas state content to just Try and get some positivity. Maybe not some points till end of the game, but just try and move the football against this Baylor defense. Texas State, their next game is going to be against Houston Baptist. That's next week. Baylor's next game is going to be on the road. Big 12 conference game in Ames, Iowa against Iowa State. And that may be our final to the game. Yep, Dave Aranda, his team, they have picked themselves up off the mat after losing a week ago against BYU. And they come back home in front of some friendly faces and pick up a win for the second straight year against Texas State. There's your final score, 42 